Alright, here we go. Let's get into this. So I'm going to show you real quick here. So for the tops, that's a spawn point for the orange up here on the sledge. That's one for the red. And then the orange one is actually right here. So that's another one for the orange. Milking points out of the zombies. Um, easiest way to look at it, with the pistol at least, they can take twice the number of bullets to the torso for whatever round it is. So being as it's round one, they can take two shots. And then um, if you shot them a third time, they would die. So I just hit them with the shovel to get the max number of points out of each zombie. Now I'm checking the spawn points here to see, um, just kind of stay ahead of the game to locate the color coordinated um, number spindles and those are the ones that correspond to the tops that you find. There's the red top, the green top, and the orange top and I'm going to see if a green top is up here and it actually is but it's a little harder to see from down here. Check another spawn point, no spindle, and go up here and there's another one. Okay, so that's actually there. So it's a red one, the red ribbon. Um, so this window here, break it. There's the green top. You can just smack it down with the shovel and pick it up. There's no prompt to actually pick these things up. You just stand close to them and hold square. Um, so another thing I should note too is uh, you don't want to burn through the rounds. You want to do whatever you can um, within each wave of zombies before moving on to the next. There's a bonus zombie, but I botched that kill. So, I know that the, the next door I need is a thousand points, and I won't be able to actually get that like with these two zombies. So, uh, before I end this wave, I'm going to show you. There's another spawn point for the orange top, and then up on there, that, that uh, window still there, that's another one for the green. And that's all the spawn points in this main area. So once I open the next door I can show you the remaining ones. But uh, we've already found the orange and the green. I'm just kind of going over where where the other spots are that they can be. And again I'm just checking these the zombie spawn points to see if there's a number wheel in there. So being as it's wave two now I can shoot the zombies four times and then um, kill them with the shovel. If I shot them a fifth time, again, uh, it would kill them, at least in the torso. If you shoot them in the legs, it deals less damage, and therefore you can shoot them more times, but I'm not about to line up my crosshairs and, you know, basically play around with that. It's just, it's easier to just count them out based off of torso, torso shots. So I'll show you the last few spots. So up in that corner there between those two buildings, that's a spawn point for the red. And the red one's actually spawned right there. So that window sill is another one behind the flag. And then um, the last one for the orange is right there on that window sill. So that, um, that spot I found the red one in is actually one of the harder ones. Um, just because, you know, red on red, it doesn't really um, pop out. And right up there, the chimney and the roof, that's another spot for the green one. And I'll just show you more close up here for the, the windowsill. That's um, also where the green one can be found. So being as I have two numbers, um, I can stop looking for the, the number spindles. I make sure for this part, I don't have any zombies nearby when I um, ignite the pilot light. and. Uh, this guy caught fire, so just because I, I don't want to kill any zombies without getting the points for it. So, uh, okay, I got enough points for that. And the uh, reason I activated my special is because it's the first thing I do um, the very first time I get it, as soon as I get it, just because uh, it gives me those two free points of armor or geek shield and then um, it lets me work up my next one to when I need it next and I don't have to spend the 500 to get the geek shield 
And I'm actually glad that this nuke popped up. Normally I wouldn't do it, but there's only um, two zombies left here. But nukes and insta kills are the two things that you don't want to get. Um, unless you're in a defending situation where it's kind of a uh, no holds barred, anything goes sort of thing. Just because you're trying to make sure that you don't burn through the waves by having to continuously restart um, the defending. But you don't want to get the nukes or the insta kills in the waves themselves because you want the points uh, more than anything. But that was in between a wave, and it was actually at the end of a wave where I would have needed the points regardless from the zombies. And there's nothing I can do beyond that, so um, I technically need 4,500 points to move uh, on and progress to the next objective. And I'm only going to record this up until um, I charge the record player, but I can show you where the um, the Tesla batteries are for the different variants and how to get them and if I already showed you where the tops are for the hardcore uh, but that's probably getting to the record player so it's round three I can shoot him six times and then get that shovel kill I'm not gonna get that insta kill But I basically break the hardcore easter egg down into three parts. The very first thing that you want to work towards um, as smooth as possible and you know, without going through more waves than you need to is getting to that record player with the sword and charging the record player. Um, I usually get this done around wave 12 and that's a, that's a good time to do it. Um, you're still not bum rushed by zombies t uh, too bad and um, you're still able to deal quite a bit of damage to them. So this panel right here, this one holds the first Tesla battery and I'll show you how to get to that once I open the salt mine door. But, um, so the first part to the hardcore easter egg is getting to and charging the record player with the sword. The second part is um, charging all of the Tesla batteries, um, constructing the cores, and then defending uh, all at the same time. So building all the different variants of the Tesla gun, that's the second step. And then the third is finishing off the Zeppelin, um, obviously making it drop the batteries, charging the batteries, and putting them into the, the left hand of God, and then um, sounding the voice of God, both for the normal Easter egg and the hardcore Easter egg. And then um, the boss fight is also included in that. So those are the, the three parts. The first part is up to charging the record player. The second part is building all the Tesla gun variants. And then the third part is finishing off the Zeppelin and then getting to that final boss fight and um, completing that. And each step takes about an hour, which is it's pretty grueling once you already have the trophy to go through and do this again just because it is very tedious um, on solo I can only speak on solo but, uh, so the type 100 here this is the gun that I will keep for the duration um, of this playthrough um, through its entirety and that's because once you enter the boss fight this is the area of the map that you're restricted to and it's just one big circle and you only have access to the, the three wall guns um, in this area for replenishing ammo and when you have this gun pack a punched it actually does a decent amount of damage up to like round 30 or wave 30 and I'm just counting out the bullets here it seems like five kills them so I'm just gonna shoot them each four times and then get that shovel kill but um, so I keep the Type 100 for my pack mill thing. I keep a slot open for the Tesla gun because you're going to need it um, throughout, basically, and uh, at the end especially. So if you're if you're getting your hopes up, hitting that box a whole bunch of times and getting all the good guns, um, it's just going to bite you in the ass at the end because you need the Tesla guns 
to progress to the boss fight. So being as I have enough zombies, I think, I'm going to actually get enough points for my first blitz. Okay. And then, uh, so the third slot that I have for my pack mill is um, I keep that one open so I can cycle guns through. And uh, mostly it's just wall guns. So... I always buy the melee, increase melee first, and again, all of this is um, in lieu of the fact that I'm I'm attempting to show you how to accomplish the hardcore Easter egg in the easiest way possible. Um, you know, don't quote me on that. There might be an easier way, but this way for me has been has proven quite effective, and it, it it's rather smooth. But uh, so I. I buy the increased melee first, and then I get the the um, unlimited sprint, and then I get quick reload, and then just before I go into um, charge the record player, I get self revive, um, where the quick revive normally is in a multiplayer um, mode. And the reason I get that bef just before I go in there is because that's one of the two places where it's actually um, essential to have. I thought I would get enough points this this way to open that door, but I didn't. It's not that big a deal. Um, so, when the thing with me is that when I have the self revive, I almost get too comfortable and I take more chances and risks than I have to. So keeping that away until the last second um, sort of helps me keep myself on my toes, so to speak, and uh, that way I won't waste it, because you will need the self-revive for the, the record player room, and you'll also need it for defending the last Tesla um, battery as it's um, constructing the core. So what I did here is um, I had enough points to open the salt mine door, and when you go down there and basically make eye contact with these bomber zombies they become part of whatever wave that you're in so um, I kept one pest alive and then I brought them down until these guys started chasing me and then I killed the pest and then um, these guys are now part of the wave so these are my remaining zombies to kill to end the wave and you'll need a bomber zombie like I said to open this panel there's three ways to do it you can either make them drop the bomb like I did, you can shoot one um, until it explodes while it's still holding the bomb as it's in front of the panel, or you can just stand in front of the panel and uh, take the damage. That's the most um, foolproof way, but it um, if two of them are stacked on top of each other, it will take armor away from you, but one of them exploding won't, won't take all your health even. So I'm just baiting these guys along. I want to charge. I want to start to charge this um, beast crap device. And so I can start with these two guys first. And now that I have my max ammo from what I picked up from the pest, I can um, afford to dish out some bullets here. So it's round five. Now all I do is unload a clip. I don't really count anymore and then I just smack them with the shovel when the time is right. Um, I don't always get a full clip into them, but this is how I farm points from this point forward. So that battery, this this battery that dropped goes in here, and this is actually the electrical trap. Um, in order to charge this battery, you need the rustlings or the sword guys, as I like to call them, um, and you need them in pairs of two, but you have to kill them with the trap. So you just lure them in there, make sure there's two of them each time, and then you set the trap, and that one, uh, that trap is actually 
it actually attracts the zombies, so when it's active, um, it helps when you're trying to defend the cores in that section of the map too. But I'm only going to kill what I need to charge this thing, so I don't want to do it. Because I'm already in wave 6. And you can, you can actually ch uh, completely construct the Tesla gun by wave 6, and there's a trophy for doing that. I do already have the trophy, but I'm not trying to accomplish that this playthrough. It's just uh, a good rule of thumb, you know, it, it keeps you on pace. It'll let you know if you're ahead of the game, if you're falling a little bit behind, depending on which wave you're in by the time the Tesla gun is constructed. And I'm just kind of picking off zombies that aren't stacked on top of each other because like I said, I don't want to kill more than I have to. Obviously, I'm going to kill this guy standing in my way. So now I'm going to start moving this thing along. And then once I get down into the laboratory, hopefully I can hold off this wave. And I'll use the sword guy that spawns there to um, get the next Tesla battery um, out of the uh, pack of function. And for the, um, if you know what you're doing, the, uh, the Type 100 is, in my opinion, the best gun to have. Just overall, um, it's, it's got a high rate of fire, it has a decent clip size, and when you have, when you run out of a clip and you automatically reload, it's, um, it's lever action is pretty fast too. I know some guns can be pretty time consuming to reload when it's an empty clip. But the Type 100 is actually pretty quick that way. And it does a lot of damage. So I'm just going to see if I have enough kills for this thing to, to plug in. Hopefully I didn't overdo it. I probably killed a few too many, but it's not that big a deal. I mean, it's not do or die, you know, burning through these waves. It just makes the process uh, that much easier on you. So I'm just baiting this dude along. Sometimes he doesn't react, which is frustrating. And I actually open certain doors in a certain order as well. That way I'm not wasting my points on opening all the doors. Because each room basically has two doors um, to it. You can either open something from the inside out or from the outside in. And I, uh, the door that I open for the pack punch room is down by the docks um, instead of the, the one from the morgue just because when you're rerouting the power, that's the door that you want to have open so that you can get to the, um, the power switch a lot quicker than if the morgue door was open. And this door is actually only 1250, which is nice. Um, the morgue side is as well, but um, it's just nice that the door isn't 1500 like most others after the first view. Now this this zombie chasing me here, he's he's borderline gut muncher. Uh, I'm, I'm probably gonna kill him here pretty soon. But um, I, what I call gut munchers are the ones that are hunched over and they run like you know waist level basically. Um, and I like to keep my crosshair at eye level. I'm just gonna kill this guy. So if with gut munchers. If your crosshair is eye level and they're right up on you, you won't be able to see them. Uh, you won't be able to see their arms swinging or anything. Too. So behind this panel, this is the second battery. You just stand in this corner next to the crate, let them smack you. 
you'll see some people try to move out of the way last second, but I just feel the foolproof most effective way is to let him hit you. That way he stays on point. Um, and this one in relation to where you plug it in is actually the easiest, but it's by far the hardest one to actually charge. So like that. See, I, if, if that was a gut muncher, it would have been the same thing, except more often than not, gut munchers use the windmill attack, so he probably would have gotten a couple hits on me. And when you get multiple ones, that's when it gets um, extremely difficult, and it's it's my kryptonite for this game, um, just because I do like to keep that eye level crosshair. But I'm I'm hoping that the sword guy works his way back over here because they usually give off a pretty good charge for this this uh, device. I don't want to keep saying that word. Now I'm a I'm an old school Halo player, so that's kind of why I like to make you could say code names or nicknames for some of the, the creatures and games, just because it lets people know what you're talking about um, because it's relevant to the creature, like Sword Guy for the Westling. You know, you say Westling, someone's not gonna know what the hell you're talking about unless they played this game. But you say Sword Guy, and they're like, okay, I can, I can generate a picture of what that looks like, and then. Uh, for the gut munchers as well because you know they, they stay below your waist and you can't see them um, when you're eye level so picked up the sprint trying to avoid killing any zombies I don't need to just waiting for that purple circle or the purple ring to show back up to let me know that this device can start charging again And you can be pretty tactful with these mines um, if you know what you're doing. I guess you can just say that pretty much anything, but um, with these things, especially because obviously they only detonate when things get close to them, um, versus the the timed explosions from the, the hand grenades and the sticky bombs, and then the uh, the detonator for the, the sticks of dynamite. Um, tight spot here. Okay, I, I normally wouldn't have taken that risk. I would have activated my my front line, but I'm trying to hold off on using that until I get to the central lightning rod to defend it. Because as I stated in my loadout video, it will actually draw them away. Okay, well that's garbage. I should have charged that thing. I'm actually going to buy this as soon as I have the points. It was only 500, and it doesn't actually set me back any. So now I'm going to start building or opening the uh, pack a punch. I guess I forgot to mention the battery that I unlocked down there um, that I had the sword guy knock out for me. It um, charges with bomber zombies. So apparently this let me pick up the top before I open the door, but that doesn't usually happen. Um, and one thing I should note for the, the tops is that you don't want to open doors just to get to them. You kind of want to pick them up along the way. Um, just so you don't have to spend unnecessary points um, when you don't have them. And now I have all three tops. And the door that I chose to open there actually was the door um, that's preferably the first one you should open for the record player room. Just because that's your, your um, quickest out when you get in a tight spot there. But uh, going back to the second Tesla battery you um, you have to kill bomber zombies in pairs of two 
and uh, it's the most difficult one to charge for multiple reasons. One is that the trap isn't an area of effect. It's it's um it's saw blades that run the they run a pattern and they run the course of the uh, ground floor in there. And if you don't have the two bomber zombies together when they die, mm, the blades will normally end up killing one and not the other. Um, and then it won't charge the battery. So that that's one of the reasons. And then the other is that the if you don't shoot the bombs off their backs and you choose to keep them slow walking, it's difficult to line them up together to get them um, close to each other so that they can die at the same time next to the battery because you know if they get close to you then they just detonate and then a third reason is the fact that you only get so many bomber zombies per round and it's always random so you could get one you could get two you could get three you could get I've had five by round um, like 18 before but then also I've had ones and twos so you, you never know what you're gonna get it's very meticulous when you're done. So I'm actually going to keep this guy alive until I get to the burner and take him out. And this gun I picked up down in the morgue, uh, this is one of the wall guns that you'll use that third slot to swap, swap with, especially when you're trying to charge the battery um, down there with the bombers, zombies, because shooting the backpack zombies can be a little difficult at times and if you're using a stock weapon from uh, you know the wall it's obviously not upgraded and you can afford to shoot the actual bomber zombie a couple times in the head without killing it as you're trying to shoot that backpack zombie to make him drop the bomb which makes it ten times easier if you ask me when trying to charge that battery and obviously the gun is there so you can keep replenishing ammo um, so that's another reason and I guess I got all the use I could out of that zombie but I should be able to finish this side guy off real quick and another place you swap weapons is defending the central lightning rod um, I take I usually take the wall gun there it has a, an extremely high rate of fire but the, you know, I can replenish the ammo right there, so it's not that big a deal. And uh, it, it helps more than it hurts when it comes to that, that part. So I'm going to grab the Tesla gun here so I can show you where the third um, Tesla battery is. You'll need a burner head and the Tesla gun. And then there's actually three things you use the burner head for. So the first is revealing the third Tesla battery. Um, it also like unlocks, I guess you could say, the, the safes to um, getting the coins for the sword, each half of the coin for the sword. And then also when you're trying to find the, the voice of God, the notes for the voice of God from the pictures. Those are the three things that you use the burner head for. I'm going to show you the first one here. So it's this statue here. You just shine the light as if you were looking down your sights with a gun. You have to shoot it with the Tesla to actually dislodge it from the statue and then you plug it in right there but I couldn't get that. I'm gonna need quick reload here pretty soon. Now the Tesla gun itself uh, I feel is an extremely versatile tool just because if you if you use it right sword guys um, 
pretty much become obsolete as any sort of a problem and it gets you out of tight spots and also not to mention I mean you need it to progress through the objectives and stuff so plus it gives you more ammo than any of the other um, Tesla variants so being as I'm completely out of ammo for my type 100 I'm kind of a waste not guy um, having grown up on Resident Evil games I like to make sure I'm completely out of ammo with it and if I'm not then I'll just um, dispense all of my ammo shooting zombies down here then I'll plug it into the pack a punch so I can get the those free bullets um, and I usually do that with any gun that I'm about to pack a punch to but for this one this playthrough specifically it's the type 100 and it's usually the only gun that I ever pack a punch when I'm doing the hardcore easter egg So I know the two numbers here, this one is 12, and orange is 11, and now I can just spin the green one until the drawer opens, I don't need to know the number. And you can actually do it knowing only one number, but the process is a little longer. Um, you basically just rotate one of the other two remaining um, tops one spot each time, and then you'll rotate the third one all 12 through all 12 positions and then if you don't get it that time you you rotate the second one to the next position and then um, you know, repeat the process and once you turn the power on you can go up here and you actually don't turn the power on you just uh, you inspect the right hand of God. You reroute the powder, the power. Sorry. And this is where the door, um, the opening of the doors comes into play, as well as having sprint. You can obviously make it there without the unlimited sprint, um, with more than enough time to finish. But it just makes it that much easier and that much quicker, because you know each each one of these parts takes. 60 minutes, you know, 50 to 60 minutes. And since I'm already here, I'm just going to go straight to the tower. And I normally would get that wall gun, but I do have my Type 100 pack a punched and it has full ammo. And I'll only need to hold off this first lightning rod uh, once I get past this part. I'll activate the two individuals lightning rods and then I can um, vacate the area and activate my front line and it should buy me enough time so that I can just kind of walk away and not have to deal with this part. And like I pointed out earlier, in situations where you are defending, it um, it's just the you know do whatever it takes kind of thing. So I did use the nuke. If there was an insta kill, I'd pick that up as well. I'm just trying to make this as simple a process as possible, and I actually did get an insta kill. I mean, defending is a painstaking process as it is, so making it easier on yourself is um, it's only going to, you know, give you the dexterity to play the game longer, because when things don't work in your favor, especially me, it just turns me off to the game completely. So I just make it as easy as I possibly can. And I mean, you're either going to burn through rounds killing all the zombies each wave, or you're going to do it by continuously having to restart the, the defending process. And then you're just there for that much longer. So now I should be pretty good to just leave. 
I activated my front line. As you can see, the health bars have stopped flickering and the zombies are leaving them alone. So I'll open this door. And now I will turn on the power or activate the right hand of God and this triggers the Zeppelin so now the next thing I do is I shoot down the first battery from the Zeppelin and then depending on where it lands if it's blocking a, a walkway I'll charge it otherwise I'll just leave it be until I finish I'm um, constructing the different Tesla variants. And I actually have to get this ready. Okay. Well, I guess I found a little bit of something. A little bit of everything I mean here. As you can see, this room is dark. That means the power is not on. I will show you how to do that, um, as well as getting the, the last Tesla battery out. I'm just gonna get this one down real quick. That should have dropped. No worries, though. Alright, now I'm gonna scout this thing out and see where it fell. And I would say 80% of the time it does fall into a narrow walkway, um, creating a bottleneck situation. So, like this right here, I'm definitely gonna charge this to get it out of the way. I'd much rather have something go from being twice the size of me to being you know, a tenth of the size of the thing that's blocking the way. And once I charge it, it turns into a little itty bit of battery and then I can just leave it there for the time being because you basically just walk through it, you don't get hung up on it, so it's not blocking anything anymore. Gonna round some zombies up. I guess you could also look at this video as a demonstration of how getting to the box so that you can, you know, get Jack in the box is not as critical a piece as everyone has it made out to be. Um, you can definitely get by without having Jack in the box. Does it make it easier? Hell yes. It makes it ten times easier. Myself an old tight spot there, but again, I managed to get out. This freaking battery should be charged by now, Jesus.
And I guess I should elaborate um, a little more on why I try to go through waves sparingly. And that is because, as you saw at the central lightning rod, when you're defending something, they'll just stack waves on top of each other. So there won't be a rest period between the waves. Um, if you're getting close to the end of a wave, like wiping them out, it'll just send the next wave automatically. And, you know, if you're doing a good job of defending, you'll go through two to three waves um, for each defense. And being as there's, you know, four of the, the Tesla batteries, you know, you do the, the math and everything, plus the central lightning rod, if you don't keep track of it, um, the game can get away from you. And if you're not by, if you're not to the final boss by wave 30, that becomes um, a headache all in itself. Because you have so many zombies running around in such a confined space trying to complete objectives at the same time. So here I'm going to show you how to turn the power on to the record player room. So you hold square on the, the little rooster there, he'll spin and then he'll land pointing in a direction um, and that little orange dot of light will um, show up in one of three spots. You'll shoot it, it'll send sparks letting you know that you hit it and then you bring your Tesla gun down here once this thing is done rotating you shoot those coils and uh, make sure that it, it uh, registers the shot. The other two spots that the orange light will spawn is directly behind you as you're looking at the rooster. There will be uh, a corner apartment window on the second floor and you'll look through the opening and there's a back wall there. It's pitch black and you'll see the orange dot. And then the third spot is on the bridge to the central lightning rod. You'll go down by the docks where I shot the, the coils and then you look over to the brick wall where the, the archway is above the water and you'll see the orange dot there. So since I left my Brenner head up here, I'll plug this battery in just to show you that it does go here. And then that one charges off of regular zombie kills, that battery up there. And that trap is um, like a bouncing Betty. It's a bunch of landmines. Um, so it, that one and the one in the morgue are easy and they make up for the complexity of the other two. So you leave the burner head there in the commander's room. You'll turn the power switches back on that you did at the very beginning. And once you turn these two on, it'll actually reveal a third um, right next to where I put that burner head down. And um, you'll have to make it there in the time limit as well this time. Again, another another point in the, the playthrough where the sprint comes in handy. Then you make your way back over here. Have your Tesla gun ready. Turn that power on. It'll expose these coils. Shoot them. Make sure it registered the shot. Bring this burner head over here. You'll shine the light on the safe there and then the one over here. And this is also a timed uh, a timed thing. You'll hear like a, a typewriter click like those um, those olden day cash registers. That'll let you know that you actually um, unlocked it, I guess you could say. And then you can just leave the burner head wherever. And now this is the this is where the camouflage actually benefits you more than the front line, but I feel that it only plays to your benefit in two specific aspects, and that is this right here, where you're trying to line up the five um, blue fingerprints for each safe, and then also the camouflage is um, more useful than the front line when you're carrying a battery, because you reduce the half speed even when you're sprinting. And when the zombies can't see you, obviously, um, you know, it makes it uh, that much easier. So you just um, 
keep pressing square on whichever digit you're lined up with until a blue fingerprint shows. You really only need to focus on lining four up because when it comes down to that last one you can just spam the square button. Um, you won't overshoot it because once it lines up that fifth one it'll just automatically unlock. And since they chased me out of there, I'm just going to show you real quick where this, how to get this last Tesla battery. Um, so you'll shoot this very first light here until it sparks, and then you can shoot it with whatever gun you want. But obviously to spare myself ammo, I'm just going to use this gun. And you can either look for the sparks or the green light to differentiate between which light bulbs you should shoot. And it's the set pat same pattern every time. If you need to, um, you can just keep watching this portion of the video, but once you get it the first time, it's pretty easy to remember. That's one of the trickier ones, but then these ones are pretty straightforward. And then this one and that one. You skip the rest on the ceiling there, go into the morgue. The very first one you see here, that one. This is another tricky one because if you uh, if you were sprinting like I am and you just kind of round the corner, you wouldn't have seen it. And then the last one is down here. And then it just drops it in the ceiling. You pick it up and plug it in right here. And then this is the other easy one. This one charges off of pest kills. And the trap down here is spikes in the ground um, like from the original Mortal Kombat movie where uh, Liu Kang beats Shang Tsung. And another thing I should say about that, finding that last Tesla battery, you know, thank God for the those gamers who can decode shit, you know, gaming code, because anyone who has the time to give to go over every square inch of this freaking map or any other for that instance to find these things that don't tell you what to do and are definitely far from obvious um, I just don't think it's possible you know in my honest opinion I don't see how anyone could have figured that out without deciphering gaming code to see that that was there so um, hats off to those guys, thank god they're around. Uh, I mean, I don't know whether or not to be more frustrated with the game developers putting that stuff in there, or the fact that uh, there's people out there savvy enough to actually figure the stuff out in the code. But, either way. starting to get on my nerve. This guy borderline gut muncher, I'm about to kill him pretty soon. So I have both halves of the coin right now. I think it let me pick that one up. I'm going to go down here, grab the sword. I'll show you where that is. And then I'm sort of warming up or working up to going into the record player room. So you'll see this little medallion here. You hold square on that. And then the sword will just kind of pop up in your hand, but I'll show you where it actually is. There's the imprint. You'll have you'll get the sword and that is the way to that you charge the record player and um Again, it's one of the two most difficult things throughout this playthrough. Um, but now I'm going to make sure that I have everything I need going into charging the record player. So I want to make sure I have full armor. So I just grab that. I'm going to grab this. So that's my uh, self revive. And now I can see that I don't have a double meter. So, hopefully I won't have to go through too many zombies to get one of those to drop. Mm. 
and now the lights are on because I turned the power on. Just trying to use this max ammo effectively. And I'm choosing to use my weaker gun right now because uh, it's still nice to have the points, even though I don't necessarily need them. Worst case scenario kind of thing. out of the way while I've got some space. So typically round 12, 13, sometimes 14 is when I will uh, be set to go into the rectifier room and actually charge it. Oh, there we go. So, this is the um, most recurring strategy that I've seen done only one way, and that is when other people do this, they try to but their wave up against a pest round so they'll try to do it at the end of round 14 and then into round 15 or at the beginning of round 15 into the beginning or through round 15 into the beginning of round 16 but me I'm just gonna place it on that. Um, let me see if I actually grab that thing. No I did not. So in case you didn't know each wave has a certain amount of zombies, like a set number of zombies that can have spawned at once. So what I do is I just wait in this area here and I round up the zombies until I can see that none, uh, no more are spawning. And then I bait them along to the record player room and I put the record player on just before I'm, start, I'm about to start killing because I know charging it has something to do with um, the song and the song just continues to repeat but I think you have to do it um, you have to charge the record player in the, the amount of time that the song lasts so if you're killing and you're at the end of the song and then it loops back around to the beginning I'm pretty sure that it uh, restarts the charging. So, place the record, and of course my first swing is a dud. More often than not, you will get a couple dud swings. One of the more frustrating bits of this. Now, you don't necessarily have to worry about the sword guys, especially because of the fact that you have front line, because um, the default to frontline is that when it's active you um, deal double damage and the fact that you have increased melee already um, those guys don't pose any sort of threat when you get in here unless of course you get some dead zones but there's nothing you can do to control that and I just I'm placing these over here um, I don't like to get zombies coming from both sides right away So one thing I do know is that you have to charge the sword first, like right now I have the sword charged and I actually went down with this. Um, and then these kills is what really charges the record player, it lets you know that you're getting close. So I'm just getting a here, so I'm activating my, my uh, front line, 
is when it comes into play most effectively. And once the record player is done taking souls, which it is, that means it is charged. Um, <clears throat> so once you stop seeing those purple arcs of lightning stretching from the zombies to the record player, that's how you know the record player is fully charged. And I'm just going to go up here to show you. It'll start to um, skip, and then you can see the green light flashing. You count the number of flashes, um, the green light flashes, and then the red separates the cycle. So you start